the movie begins in the middle of the night. We see a man named Paul who is toiling away at the mannequin factory, surrounded by the eerie silence of the empty warehouse. Suddenly, his phone buzzes with a video call from his son Martin. Martin's worried voice fills the screen as he confides in his father about Sophie, Paul's wife, who has been acting strangely lately. He tells him that she is talking to herself again. With a reassuring tone, Paul comforts his son, promising that everything will be alright, and Sophie will bounce back soon. Meanwhile, Esther, Paul's trusty assistant, is in the midst of locking up the warehouse for the- As she flicks off the lights, a chilling presence materializes at the back of the room, shrouded in darkness. Esther's heart races as she catches sight of a mysterious silhouette lurking in the shadows. Yet, when she hastens to flip the lights back on, the figure inexplicably disappears into thin air. Determined to know what it is, Esther repeats the process several times, each time with a same spine-chilling result. On the fifth attempt however, her pulse quickens as the figure materializes closer than before. Sensing danger, Esther wastes no time in rushing away and relaying her unsettling encounter to Paul. Yet, to her dismay, Paul brushes off her concerns, urging her to leave for the night. Before she goes, she makes sure to ask Paul to be careful on his way out. Nevertheless, as the minutes tick by and the warehouse grows still, Paul finds himself locking up the place alone. After looking at his desktop wallpaper, which happens to be his family portrait, he leaves his office. As the man walks towards the main door, he feels a creeping sense of unease gnawing at him. Suddenly startled, he looks back at the dimly illuminated expanse of the warehouse. As he focuses deeper into the shadows, all of a sudden he comes face to face with the enigmatic figure, crouched in a corner. The silhouette begins to straighten as it detects Paul's presence. A surge of fear grips Paul as the lights abruptly flicker off, plunging him into darkness. Frantically, he fumbles around for the light switch. When the lights finally illuminate the space once more, the figure looms ominously closer than before, its form now towering and menacing, with wild tendrils of hair dancing in the air. In a panic, Paul bolts, his heart pounding in his chest. But as he flees, he falls down and feels a searing pain shoot through his leg. Glancing down, Paul sees a deep gash etched into his flesh. The man looks shocked since he himself doesn't know how he got that cut. Perhaps it is the evidence of the chilling encounter with the unknown creature who is crouching down nearby. Seeing it, the man notices that it remains in the dark spots and refuses to come to the light. It turns out that the dark creature is scared of the light. Understanding the situation, Paul races back towards the safety of the well-lit office and slams the door shut behind him. His mind is overwhelmed with terror-fueled realizations. He quickly looks around and grabs a baseball bat for protection. Just then, the lights outside turn off. As he stands, gasping for breath, sudden darkness envelops the office. Paul's senses heighten, his muscles tensing in anticipation. Suddenly, the ominous figure makes its move, pressing against the door. The handle creaks and jiggles violently. After a moment, with a creak, the door gives way. Paul cautiously steps back, bracing himself for the impending onslaught. But before he can react, an unseen creature seizes him, pulling him mercilessly into the dark corner. He shrieks and strange crunching noises echo throughout the room. Moments later, a bloodied and lifeless body of Paul slams down below the light bulb, outside. Days later, we see Martin's stepsister Rebecca, who is spending the night with her boyfriend named Brett. After spending intimate time together, Rebecca gets up to shower. Afterwards, she asks Brett to leave and also confirms the time of their date the next day. On the other side, we see Martin who is about to drift off to sleep. Before he closes his eyes, a faint murmur echoes through the stillness of the house. Curiosity peaked, he cautiously goes towards his mother's room, where he finds her engaged in what appears to be a heated exchange. The room is shrouded in darkness, and there is no one else present except his mother. A shiver of unease courses through Martin's spine as he realizes this. Yet, Sophie's soothing voice breaks through the tension. She apologizes for disturbing him and urges him to return to his slumber. Reluctantly, Martin retreats to his room, but as he steals one last glance down the hallway, he catches sight of a hand creeping into view at the corner of the doorway to his mother's room. Oblivious, Sophie is standing just beside it. Heart pounding, Martin bolts back into his room, slamming the door shut and diving beneath the safety of his covers. His heart thunders as he thinks back to what he just encountered. Outside, the lights flicker ominously before plunging into darkness. Slowly, someone seems to approach his room as the floorboards creak. Then, the unmistakable sound of his door handle rattling fills the air, as if a malevolent entity is desperately trying to breach the barrier between them. The next day at school, Martin finds himself dozing off, prompting a visit to the nurse's office. 
The nurse calls his mother, who doesn't pick up. Concerned for Martin's well-being and unable to reach Sophie, the school nurse asks Martin if there is someone else who can come for him. Soon, we see Rebecca and her boyfriend enter the school. Brett expresses his surprise, saying that he didn't know she had a brother. As they approach the nurse's office, they meet with Emma, a representative from Child Protective Services. There, Rebecca is briefed on Martin's situation. It turns out that he has been sleeping in the homeroom for the third time in a row. The woman grills her for answers regarding her mother and how Martin is doing at home. However, she wouldn't know. She says that she doesn't live with them, so there's nothing to report. It turns out that her father left back when she was a child, and her mother soon started acting strange. Thus, she left the house and has a strained relation with her mother ever since. Inside the nurse's office, Martin confronts Rebecca. He says that he wasn't sure she would actually come. After that, he questions cryptically if this is why she left the house. Rebecca understands that he is referring to their mother's strange behavior. Yet, Rebecca deflects his inquiry, opting instead to offer him a ride home. Upon arrival, Martin pleads to stay at Rebecca's apartment for the night, but she dismisses his request. She insists that they return to the house together leaving Brett waiting in the car. As they go near the main gate, Martin gets a little scared and refuses to get inside. He confides in Rebecca about Sophie's mysterious conversations with someone named Diana. Shocked. Rebecca takes a deep breath and bends down to relax the scared little boy. She tells him that she is well aware of what he is going through. But Martin must not get scared since Diana isn't real. She explains that Diana exists solely within Sophie's mind. It's a mere figment born of her imagination. She knows all this because their mother did the same thing to her as well, back when her dad had abandoned them. She used to have nightmares about Diana because of their mother. As they are talking, someone seems to be watching them through the window. Martin absorbs this information, his thoughts swirling with newfound understanding. Just then, Sophie opens the door and steps out. She sees Rebecca and greets her. Sophie's eyes then land on Martin, and she asks why he is not in school. Martin defers to Rebecca to explain, quietly slipping away to his room to gather his belonging. Unaware of Martin's intentions, Rebecca engages in a tense conversation with Sophie. She tells her how Martin has not been sleeping well. She then asks if her mother is taking her antidepressants. Turns out she isn't. Angry, the mother and daughter duo argue back and forth, culminating in a heated exchange between the two. Back upstairs, Martin takes his packed bags and rushes out of his room. There, he feels a strange presence. Wasting no time, the boy rushes downstairs amidst the disagreement of his mother and stepsister. He arrives just in time as Rebecca is telling her mom how Martin would be staying with her for a few days until she gets her act right. Sophie's heartbreak is visible as she pleads with Rebecca to allow Martin to stay, tears streaming down her face. But the woman takes the kid away. Martin also happily leaves after telling his mother to take her vitamins. Soon, they reach Rebecca's apartment where she shows Martin to the bedroom adorned with edgy posters casting shadows across the walls. Despite the dim decor, Martin begins to unpack his belongings. He takes out his flashlight first and makes sure to check if it is working properly. As Rebecca steps out of the room, Brett's concern surfaces. He questions Rebecca's motives, asking whether her decision to take Martin away from their mother is rooted in genuine concern or driven by a desire to inflict her suffering. Growing frustrated by Brett's probing, Rebecca asks him to leave. The man sighs and leaves the house. Left alone, she turns her attention to her brother while preparing dinner. She quickly patches up a couple of sandwiches for the both of them. Amidst the quiet meal, Rebecca fetches a comb to brush her brother's hair. As she is smoothing down his hair with gentle affection, suddenly Martin's voice breaks the silence. He asks her innocently if their mother crazy, and if so, does it mean they are too? She feels pity for her poor little brother and assures him that they are not defined by their mother's struggles. Soon after they retire for the night, in the middle of night, Rebecca's sleep is interrupted by the unsettling absence of Martin from his bed. Alarmed, she rises and is drawn by a faint scratching echoing through the silent room. She thinks that it is Martin and calls out, but to no avail. Fumbling around, she searches for the source of the noise and stumbles upon a chilling sight. In the eerie darkness, a hunched figure with long hair is crouched down near the bedroom door. Its form keeps appearing and disappearing along with the light in that corner. The figure starts nearing her, and Rebecca feels a chill run down her spine. Before it can attack her, Rebecca rushes towards the light switch and turns it on, banishing the entity back into the darkness from where it came. In the midst of her panic, she notices her brother gone and frantically searches for Martin. 
She goes to the bathroom and relief floods her when she discovers him asleep in the bathtub. He is clutching his flashlight which is turned on as he sleeps. As dawn breaks, there is a knock at the door. Rebecca opens it to find Emma standing there. She says that her mother called and also delivers a strict message about the legality of taking Martin without their mother's consent. Rebecca's heart sinks as she realizes the gravity of the situation. Emma tells her that she cannot just go, grab Martin and keep him. If she wants to take care of him and become his legal guardian, she must take legal action before she can remove Martin from their mother's care. Reluctantly, Emma whisks Martin away, leaving Rebecca alone in the empty apartment once more. Lost in thought, she notices a strange scribble on the floor. The name Diana is scrawled alongside a crude drawing on the very place where she witnessed the strange creature last night. All of a sudden, a flood of memories washes over her. She recalls a similar incident from her own childhood, when she heard strange noises in the darkness while sketching her family. She remembers how the sketchbook had vanished without her noticing, and as she had approached the source of the place where the noise emanated from, her sketchbook had fallen down before her. In it, apart from her mother and father, another member was added, named Diana. Later, determined to unravel the enigma surrounding her family and Diana, Rebecca calls Brett to come and take her to her mother's house. The boy arrives, and they make up. As they arrive at the house, Rebecca takes out the hidden key and opens the door. Once inside, she tells Brett to look for her mother, while she herself ascends the stairs. Her footsteps echo in the silence as she rushes towards the room where Martin had last seen the strange dark creature. It turns out to be the office. She goes in and begins looking around for any clues that can tell her more about the mysterious Diana. There, she sees a picture attached to the wall. Two small girls stand side by side. She takes it down and flips it over. On the backside, she sees the names Diana and Sophie written. It seems Diana and Sophie have known each other since childhood. Putting it back, she continues to dig around. In a dusty box tucked away in a forgotten corner, she finds a ton of documents along with a tape. She plays the tape and flips through the documents to uncover a chilling detail. Sophie was once admitted to a mental hospital, back when she was a child. As she pours over the unsettling records, Rebecca's blood runs cold at the mention of a girl named Diana afflicted with a rare skin disorder that condemned her to a life of darkness. At that time, she had befriended Sophie. The experimental treatments administered by the doctors, utilizing an array of lights, culminated in tragedy with Diana's untimely demise. Just then, she hears a strange scratching noise and decides to follow it. Back downstairs, Brett is waiting in the dark living room. After a while in the darkness, he begins feeling uneasy and gets up to open the curtains. Unbeknownst to him, he has unconsciously saved his own life. The creepy queen of the dark sits behind him, waiting for a chance to attack. Upstairs, driven by a relentless thirst for truth, Rebecca follows the noise and comes upon her old room. There she searches for the light switch, but is unable to find any. Her eyes then land on a piece of paper peeking out from the drawer. Bending down, she picks it up. It turns out to be the same old drawing that Diana had altered. As the girl is immersed in the drawing, all of a sudden, the door slams shut plunging the room into darkness. With the shadows closing in around her, Rebecca pounds furiously on the door. Her cries for help echo through the stillness of the house. But before Brett can come to her aid, an unseen force seizes her, lifting her from the ground and choking her with inhuman strength. It whispers to her, saying that she would not be sent away again. Soon Brett arrives and forcefully pushes the door open. The room is finally flooded with light, and the sinister presence of Diana is banished back into the darkness. Rebecca crashes back to the ground, gasping for air. Brett informs her that Sophie is returning. They quickly grab the box containing the damning evidence of Sophie's past and flee through the back door. Meanwhile, Sophie and Martin return to the house. They are conversing lightheartedly. Martin asks if she took her vitamins, and she replies that she is feeling better, meaning that she didn't take them after all. Sophie apologizes for not being there for him lately, and wishes to make up for that. She says that a little me time is what they need, all three of them. And no, she isn't talking about Rebecca here. Scared, Martin asks her innocently that perhaps it should be just the two of them today. She pauses and says that they will see. Later, they settle in for the movie night. The warmth of their shared company fills the room. With popcorn in hand, they share lighthearted conversation about how their lives changed after Paul's passing. Martin tries to lift his mother's spirit by saying that Emma told him the best way to get over their fears. It is to face them. Midway through the movie, Sophie gets up for a moment and abruptly turns off the light. Startled, poor Martin begs her mother not to do this, but she doesn't listen. Diana appears. Poor Martin's courage wavers with a knot of fear tightening in his chest. 
Sophie tries to calm his nerves with the story of how she is friends with Diana, only to intensify the little boy's growing sense of dread. Desperate to escape the encroaching darkness, Martin fumbles for the light switch. Diana rushes to attack him. Scared for her son, Sophie quickly rushes in and becomes collateral damage. Just then, Martin quickly turns on the light. He seizes this opportunity to flee, racing towards the safety of Rebecca's house. Back in Rebecca's house, she is sitting with her boyfriend, telling him about how her mother used to be in a mental hospital and how Diana was eliminated due to a medical experiment gone wrong. Moments later, there is a knock on the door. Brett opens the door to find a scared and panting Martin there. They quickly usher him in and the man goes to fetch some groceries. Alone with Rebecca, Martin recounts the harrowing encounter. His voice trembles as he says that she wouldn't believe him, but to his shock, Rebecca tells him that she believes. She then tells him everything that she knows about Diana. She also tells him that their mother used to be in a mental hospital where she met her. There Diana, who was famous for getting inside people's minds, made Sophie believe that she was her friend, when in fact, she was the very opposite. In the midst of their conversation, a sudden knock echoes from the door. They quickly go to open the door thinking that Brett might have returned. To their bewilderment, there seems to be no one outside. Soon, the shocked silence is shattered by the ominous scratching echoing from the bedroom closet. After asking her brother to move back, Rebecca summons her courage and moves towards the source. There she flings open the closet door, but thankfully Diana isn't inside. Her relief is short-lived as all of a sudden, the terrifying creature snatches Martin from beneath the bed, pulling him into the darkness. Seeing this, Rebecca lunges forward, grasping Martin's hand to save her from Diana's clutches. Finally, it is only after Martin is released that the two take a deep breath of peace. That night, Rebecca decides to go visit her mother, alongside Brett and Martin, to try and attempt to reason with her. But her arguments fall on deaf ears. Her mother stubbornly denies Diana's demise. She says that these things can be faked, and she is real. She refuses to believe in ghosts and thinks that Diana is real. Saying this, she storms off back to her room. Angry, Rebecca decides to leave. She asks Martin to come with her, and then tomorrow they would call and inform the CPS. However, Martin's unwavering loyalty to their mother leaves Rebecca with no choice but to stay over. He says that despite everything that she is, she is still their mother. They cannot leave her. Thus, the three of them devise a plan to stay the night together under one roof. They light candles and set bulbs everywhere to keep the dark out. Brett sleeps over at the couch, while Rebecca and Martin decide to huddle together in Martin's room. Before retiring for the night, Rebecca goes into Sophie's room to inform her of their decision to stay over. Before she turns around to go, the door creaks open and shockingly Sophie thanks her for her decision. Her sound is strangely desperate, as if she is asking for help. They hug, and in a moment of urgency, Sophie slips a note into Rebecca's hand before she is tugged back inside. Shocked, Rebecca opens the note to find the words, I need help, written there. Racing against time, Rebecca searches the house for Sophie's medications, only to discover that they have long expired, leaving them defenseless against the looming threat. With a heavy heart, Rebecca retreats to Martin's side. As they are sleeping, all of a sudden, the house is bathed in darkness. Each and every light source is extinguished. Startled, Rebecca quickly gets up and turns on the lamp. She rushes down to look for Brett and finds the couch empty. Turns out, Brett has gone outside to search for the reason behind the sudden outage. Taking a deep breath, Rebecca decides to venture down into the basement to look for the fuse box. Back upstairs, in the eerie stillness of the night, Martin awakens to find himself alone. Armed with only a flickering candle, he ventures into the dimly lit hallway, his heart hammering in his chest as he senses a malevolent presence lurking in the shadows. Sadly, Martin's fears materialize as Diana emerges from the darkness behind him. Desperate to escape, Martin stumbles forward, but Diana's sinister grip tightens around him. She drags him and he falls, but manages to keep the candlelight burning. It momentarily forces Diana to retreat. Taking the moment, Martin flees downstairs to the basement, where he finds Rebecca. But their reunion is short-lived as they realize the gravity of their situation. They've walked straight into a trap. With no time to spare, they race back upstairs. However, before they reach the door, Diana seals the basement door with a menacing slam. They shout for Brett to come save them. As the boy re-enters the house, he hears the noise and comes to their rescue. But Brett's frantic efforts to rescue them are met with failure. In a chilling twist, he comes face to face with Diana herself. The woman's menacing form draws ever closer with each passing moment. As Brett points at Diana with his flashlight, she momentarily fades into the darkness. She reappears at his side, 
swiftly knocking the light from his grasp and sending him crashing to the ground. Rebecca screams from behind the basement door to stay in the light. Thus, Brett refuses to succumb to the darkness. Seizing his phone, he points its screen light at Diana that forces her to recoil. The terrified man then scrambles to his feet and flees. His heart races with the adrenaline-fueled urgency of survival. Diana also refuses to let go and closes in on Brett as he reaches his car. Before the woman can do more damage, he triggers the car alarm that turns on the car headlights. This pushes Diana away, giving him a chance to escape. With precious seconds ticking away, Brett wastes no time in fleeing the scene. His car tires screeching as he races towards the promise of safety, leaving behind his girlfriend to fend for herself. Back inside the basement, Rebecca and Martin also realize that Brett would no longer come to save them, thus they rush to find more lights. Meanwhile, back upstairs, Sophie also awakens. She comes out of her room, calling out to Rebecca and Martin. Finally, she realizes the true extent of the danger. With a newfound clarity, she confronts the malevolent entity. Her voice rings out in defiance as she threatens Diana to stay away from her children. The woman says that there is no Diana without Sophie. As she reaches for her medication, her moment of resolve is shattered by Diana's merciless assault. Back in the depths of the basement, Martin and Rebecca's desperate struggle for survival continues. Rebecca tends to the flickering flames of the furnace, while Martin discovers an old ultraviolet light. With the ultraviolet light in hand, Rebecca searches the basement for more useful supplies. But instead of supplies, she discovers strange writing scattered across the walls. Soon, her hopes of using the UV light to fend off the entity are dashed when Diana materializes before her. It seems she is impervious to its glow. Desperate to escape, Rebecca makes a frantic dash back to Martin. Her hand reaches for a shovel as a makeshift weapon, but Diana quickly grabs her wrist. Just then, thankfully, Martin intervenes. He illuminates Diana's hand with a blinding flash of light, which forces her to recoil back, releasing Rebecca. Together, they race towards the safety of the furnace light. However, that light is soon extinguished. With no other choice left, the two shout their hearts out as they call out for their mother's aid. Meanwhile, outside the house, Brett finally comes back, bringing police officers alongside. They tell him to remain outside while they get in. He makes sure to tell them to keep their flashlights on and to save his girlfriend. Guess he wasn't disloyal. The officers venture into the darkness of the house, unaware of the horrors that await them. In the meantime, Sophie also regains consciousness. She hears Rebecca and Martin's frantic pleas for help and warns Diana to stay away from her children. Grabbing her medicine and a glass bottle, she breaks the door to go out. Back downstairs, the officers manage to locate Rebecca and Martin in the basement. As they let the children out, their rescue mission is swiftly overtaken by tragedy. Diana's brutal rampage claims the male officer's life. Despite Rebecca's warnings of Diana's vulnerability to light, the remaining officer's attempts to fend her off prove futile. Both the officers are taken out. Before the children are attacked, Rebecca quickly grabs the officer's flashlight and keeps Diana out. She urges Martin to go, but he refuses to go out without their mother. Just then, Brett arrives at the door. Rebecca entrusts him with Martin's safety and decides to go fetch their mother. Now, armed with the black light and flashlight, she ascends to the second floor, her steps quickening with each passing moment as Diana's menacing presence looms closer. Diana closes in on Rebecca from behind. As she tries to attack Rebecca, the latter's quick thinking and resourcefulness prove to be her salvation. She traps Diana's arm in a door sill and uses the light to scorch her hand with searing intensity. Hurt, the demon breaks open the door and seizing Rebecca, hurls her from the second floor balcony. Despite the fall, Rebecca persists. Soon Diana descends the stairs, ready to strike once more. Just then, Sophie arrives at the scene and confronts the malevolent entity head-on. With steely resolve, she brandishes a gun. Sternly warning Diana, she puts the gun to her own. Rebecca screams at her mother to not do it, but she says that it is her way of saving them. The woman then screams at Diana, saying that there is no Diana without Sophie, and finally pulls the trigger, ending it all. As the deafening sound of the gunshot reverberates through the air, Sophie's lifeless body crumples to the ground. Her final act of courage shattered the grip of darkness that once held them captive. With a shimmer of dust, Diana vanishes into nothingness. Overwhelmed with emotion, Rebecca collapses beside her mother. Her tears fall freely as she cradles Sophie's lifeless form in her arms. In the aftermath of the harrowing ordeal, Rebecca, Martin and Brett find solace in each other's embrace. They promise to stop running and always stay together. With that, the movie ends.